people say, where did life come from? Because I know I guess somebody made two people, some guy sitting on the throne made a man and a woman. Then he figured he needed some excitement, so he made a snake. In the early days, snakes walked upright, did you know that? They didn't crawl on their belly. And the snake said, eat of the fruit of knowledge. And they ate of that fruit, and they changed. And he kicked them out of the lovely garden. But what did he expect them to do? So if you have children, you try to make them smarter than you. Why didn't God do that? He made so many dummies. He must have been one of the lesser gods. So you see, everything, everything that you've learned, better yourself, make a lot of money, have a nice house. But they never teach you in school how to relate, how to communicate with others, how to share values with others. They teach you how to make a living. You become an optometrist, he becomes a physicist, you become a structural engineer, he's an architect. But in the future, none of that. Everybody is trained to be a generalist, so they understand different cultures, different values, how we get to be the way we are, so no one can ever use you for war or killing anybody or hurting anybody. Prisons will not exist in the future. We now know enough about human behavior to engineer an environment. Don't let that word scare you. In other words, instead of people moving into new cities in the future, if normal people moved into new cities, they'd louse up the cities. So before they move in, you go to an orientation center. Don't let that scare you. Here's what it means. Before you fly an airplane, anybody that flies here, they put you in a dummy plane first to see if you can understand how the controls work. Then you, they bring you over to a real airplane and they show you how to check the tire pressure, how to make sure there's no water in your fuel tank. And after they do that, then they put you in a real plane and show you how the controls work. You have to be put in an aeronautical environment. If you want to be a, a, a doctor, you're put in a medical environment. Think about that. And if you want to be an architect, you're put in an architectural environment, university. So in the future, you don't just move into the new cities. You're oriented first to how those cities work, how you get your resources, what you do when you don't like something. So you have to do that, otherwise you're going to have the same trouble. If you put normal people in, in the UN, you're going to have all the problems the UN has. The UN cannot attain dynamic equilibrium because their language is too old. They can't communicate with each other. The Democrats can't communicate with Republicans. Husbands and wives have difficulty communicating. Children and parents have difficulty communicating because our language is old and it's not the, and it's subject to interpretation. So if you're worried about these things, they're very easy to correct. It's very easy to provide an abundance for all people without working, without servitude. We're going to phase out all jobs where you don't use your head. And that's most jobs. The last time when somebody did something that radical was when the Khmer Rouge emptied Phnom Penh and made everybody leave the city to become peasants, to re-educate them. Well, what we, what we do in Stanford, we uh, encourage what you call individuality. We bring up people, I better tell you what I did with my own kid, okay? I, when my kid was four years old, he said, Daddy, the wheel came off my toy car. And I said, so it did. And I threw it in the garbage, and I picked up my book, and I was reading it. And I was watching my corner line. That lower lip goes way out. I said, what's the matter? He said, you throw it away. I said, I'll get your baby toys where the wheels don't come off. He said, well, maybe I can fix it. And I reached for it and gave it to him. And he's trying to get that wheel on. Once he gets it on, then I pick him and say, that's wonderful. How did you do that? He said, not that little. You see the hole in the wheel? Yes. You see the piece of iron sticking up? Yes. I quit turning and turned it until it went on. Oh, don't always say, let daddy fix it for you. Let daddy do this. Let daddy decide what you take at college. No, give the kid problems, let him solve them. When my little girl walked into my lab when she was three years old. <laughs> I put a wrench on her nut the wrong way, intentionally, and it keeps slipping on. So I put her on the wrong way again. She with her hands on it. Daddy, that's no way to do it. So I put her on another way. And that didn't work. So she said, I'll have to show you how. And she put the wrench on the right way. It was obvious. But I didn't want her to look up to Daddy and think he knows everything. I wanted to scan the environment and think for herself. 
I said, now what do you want, a doll? No, I want electric trains. They're more animate. See, you give it the girl a doll, a little washing machine, you're programming them. So we don't believe in trying to get anybody to do anything that I want them to do. You do what you're interested in doing. You can take courses in any subject, free of charge. You can walk out of school anytime, walk into any other classroom, sit down, if you don't like it, you walk out. So you learn where you want to learn in your own terms. Yes. We have a question here? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I understand you right, but, but it seems to me that, that, that in this vision that you're describing, um, there is a little bit of the enlightenment ideals, that whole vision that through, through the application of, um, of logic and, uh, and empiricism and, and reason not, that we can it's reach. Not the, it's not logic that we use. I'm going to give you an example. In Germany and America and France, they have all these children stand up and doing exercise together. Okay? They're ordered to appear to do that, to limber up in the army too. What we do is we build a lake in all the cities. There are lakes with an island in the middle, with a craft shop on top, where you can make anything you want to make. In order to get there, you've got to row a boat, and you've got to climb the hill. So we don't order anybody to do exercise. We build it into the environment. Do you understand? The books are placed at a level where you'll be reaching, so you'll be moving in all directions instead of going like this all day with all the other kids. That's trying to dictate behavior to to generate healthier bodies. Yes. I think uh, we do have time for one more question. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Um, as a member of the psychic movement, we often get questions regarding decision making and so on. Did you say that? Yeah, sorry. Um, Speaking loud. Yeah, re <clears throat> regarding uh, decision making by computer and so on. Uh, uh, not as a question, but more as uh, I'd ask you to elaborate on uh, the kinds of technological decision making that we're already doing in our culture. Yes. Now. <coughs> I can give you an idea if you don't understand that subject too well. In the early days, people used to launch model airplanes. Today, they're radio controlled. The guy moves the controls, and the model can do a loop or a barrel roll or anything. And it looks like the plane is doing it itself, but the guy is working the controls. Today, you can put a chip in a model airplane. It'll take off, do a loop, a barrel roll, and land. But if the runway is cracked, it'll tumble over. That's because you left out a sensor. If you put a sensor in front of that model, that scans the runway. And if there's a crack, it moves around and doesn't land in it. lands in another place. It depends on the kind of sensors you put on your machines. They're as dumb as the designer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fresco, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Nu er der pause i et kvarter cirka, og så fortsætter vi med...